Hello everyone, it's Diana. I'm Nick. And we are Team RCIA coming to you live from the intergalactic headquarters for Team RCIA, otherwise known as San Jose, California. <laughs> so uh, we've had, goodness, a busy, busy, busy week. Very busy. Last week, well, let's see, a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, we were in San Diego in person working with the seminarians for the Diocese of San Diego in Southern California. Because we could drive there and not fly. And uh, everything was socially distanced. And, uh, yeah, it was a small group, so they were able to sit far apart and far from us. And then we also celebrated uh, some of the rites, too, in we socially did. distanced ways. Yes. Um. And then last Wednesday, we were with the clergy, the priests and deacons and the bishop of the Diocese of Prince Albert in Saskatchewan. Yes. Yes, Sask SK, Saskatchewan in Canada. Uh, and this was mm -hmm. all online. Yes, it was thanks to the internets and video technology. And, um, you know, with the pandemic, everybody has gotten used to being online, but there are still hiccups. So there were some <laughs> hiccups, some technological hiccups, but uh, we got through it. And the bishop was there the entire yeah, the bishop day. bishop was great. So thank you, Bishop Albert of the Diocese of Prince Albert. Mm -hmm. And uh, the clergy, they were just so good and so engaged the entire time. Yeah, it was really, you know, we, well, they were all, let's see, there were, there were some of them were in their deaneries. Yeah. So three, four, five of them would be in a room together for that deanery of sitting six feet apart from mm -hmm. each other. And then a few of them were just in their office or their rectory alone, but everybody was on the on the, the video chat technology, so. But it was a good model. I, I yeah. think it's a useful model. So if you're thinking of trying to mm -hmm. gather a large group of people together online, you might, if, if it's possible, to group them into smaller groups that could meet together in a physically distanced way so that they could have conversation with one another and bounce off what they're hearing from the the online gathering and, and it felt a little bit more engaging that way so yep. just a pro tip for you there for online things but thank you Diocese of Prince Albert so another thing we did uh, last week was had we had a, a community chat an online discussion of uh, that was last week I think it was wasn't it? or two weeks ago it's two okay, weeks ago because last week was the yes. Prince Albert uh, in in that, that discussion was mostly about celebrating the right of acceptance. And one of the questions that came up that we didn't really have a lot of time to deal with was, how do you discern if children and youth are ready to celebrate the right of acceptance? So I wrote a longer blog post about that, which uh, came out this week, which you can see on our website, teamrca.com. Put it in the comments yeah. box also. Yeah. Uh, but we wanted to talk about that here too, uh, to give folks some some tips about that. And the really short answer is the way you discern the readiness for children and youth is pretty much the same way you do it for adults, or at least the principles are the same. Huh? But we'll look at uh, specifically what the right says mm -hmm. to give us guidance in discerning that. So uh, the, um, the usual public service announcement is always, what is the RCIA? Uh, it is an actual ritual text of the church, uh, a universal text that is used around the world in the Catholic Church. The rite of Christian initiation of adults in each country, you will have your own version that includes the universal text plus adaptations specific for your country. So this is one of the publications uh, for the United States. The cover, your cover might look different, but you need to have this text if you are going to do anything with the RCIA itself. And it's been the, it's been the same since 1988. So yeah. people see that 1988 copyright and they think, oh, this must be outdated. But it's uh, it's not. It's current. Yeah. And it so, won't change for a while. Yes. So uh, an, a question that came up in the in the uh, 
clergy conference that we did was we talked some about children's initiation and one of the questions is why why wouldn't we use the RCIC with the children and the answer is because there is no such thing as the RCIC as most of you know it is the right of Christian initiation of adults adapt we adapt the the rights or and the and the formation process to be appropriate for children but we use we, there's only one right Think of it like the mm -hmm. Rite of Confirmation, now called the Order of Confirmation. There's only one book, the Order of Confirmation, but it's the same ritual you use whether it's an older person 75 or, or a 17-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, there's no Rite of Confirmation for teens and Rite of Confirmation for older people like us. Uh, so when we're when we're going to go through these discernment issues with uh, children, discerning the readiness of children and youth for the right of acceptance, we'll be looking at the right of Christian initiation of adults, and we're going to talk about how we how we look at those principles through the eyes of a children's catechist or or parents. How you're going to discern readiness? Maybe the, the first thing is to decide who's a child and who's an adult, and what that matters to <clears> the <throat> church. Yeah, so there's not a black and white answer to that. Who's a child and who's an adult? For the purposes of the ritual, any, anyone who is of catechetical age um, <clears throat> is considered to be an adult for the purposes of the rite. So then the question is, what is catechetical age? Well, somewhere in canon law, it says about the age of seven. So a lot of people took that to mean if you're six years Six and, a half. and 11 months old you're an infant and if you're seven years old and one month you're an adult and really there's no that's not what canon says it it goes on to say you know that this is not a black and white designation it's just that most children by the time they've reached the age of seven we can consider them to be catechetical age However, some children who are younger than that age can be considered catechetical age. It's an individual discernment. And then adulthood, again, has some legalistic things in Canton law. When, when is someone considered no longer a teenager and now an adult? And you can, in the, I think in the Canton law for, um, like if you want to be a sponsor, you yeah. have to be at least 16. Something but like if that. you want to go buy booze to celebrate the confirmation you have to be 18 you know or 21 in some places Don't listen to me. so it just depends the, the, it's all it's always an individual discernment okay so but it, it is <clears throat> the age of reason or catechetical age meaning that the the person the child can uh, can respond to God's action in their life right. in a way that is appropriate for for their age. It, the, the point here is that God is always working in a person's life and uh, to know when a person is, cate is able to be catechized or has reached that age of reason is when we see visible signs of response to God's action in their life. Yep. So a simpler way to think about that is do they know right from wrong? Can they be sorry for, you know, hurting someone or being selfish or being, you know, a, a bad, not they're a bad person, but they do something bad. Can they be sorry for that? Um, uh, for preparation for First Communion, do they, will they be able to know the difference between bread and wine and the body and blood of Jesus? You know, if they're kind of at the level where they can respond to God's action in those ways, to know those differences, to know that they're on the right path, then they're catechetical age. Okay. So, when we're discerning then with children or adults, we want to know first of all uh, why discernment is important in the first place. What, why do we do discernment? What, why is that important? And in the right of acceptance, if we're discerning for that right, for readiness for that right, we look at the right itself. And the right says in paragraph 52, uh, in response, first the right opens with a dialogue with the candidate. You know, what, what are you asking for? What are you looking for? What do you want? And based on what they say, the, the, the presider is going to respond in a personal way to them, in an in a improvised but, but prayerful individual way to each person. And, and part of that response is going to include something like this statement, which is given in it as an example in paragraph 52C. You, child, candidate, youth, adult, you who want to celebrate this rite of acceptance, you must strive now 
to pattern your life on the teachings of the gospel. And so love the Lord your God and your neighbor. Are you ready to accept those teachings of the gospel? Mm -hmm. So basically a very simple statement of readiness. Are you ready to live your life according to the pattern that Jesus laid out for us in the gospel, according to the pattern that the disciples laid out for us in Acts of the Apostles? Are you ready to do that? Mm -hmm. Now, a very even uh, any new catechumen, adult or child, is not going to know the full implications of that. But that's going to be what we do in some of the. We're going to get to signs of discernment that we'll look at that, that will help them know if they're ready. But that's why we do it. That's why we do the discernment so we can discover if they're ready to take this first step yeah. on the journey of faith. So if we have if we have people, adults or children, who go through this right and we can tell right away yeah, that you know. they're, they're not really they're just, serious about it. They're just it. mouthing responses. It's not their fault. Yes. Because the discernment of readiness is our responsibility, mm -hmm. the church's responsibility to discern, can they actually answer this question? Here, Here is the way of the gospel. Are you ready to take that on? Meaning, are you ready to do the sacrifice? Are you ready to give up... Uh, your own comfort for the sake of others, are you ready to change your life? And if if we allow them to celebrate this right, knowing that they're not really in it, then we can't blame them for not really following the way of faith. I, I mean, it's a hard kind of thing to say, but discernment is a two-way street. It, it's the our responsibility to notice how God is working in this person's life and to see how they are responding to God's action in their life. And it goes even before that. In your article, you talk about, um, first off, we have, have to ask, has anyone proclaimed God's love to this person well, that's in next, order for them right, to respond? Right, that's the next important step in the in your discernment process, is, is what is it that they're saying yes to? The, mm -hmm. the way of the gospel Diana talked about. Has anyone proclaimed that to them? Has, has anyone announced the good news to them in a way that's changed their hearts? And, and there's, there's lots of ways to do that, lots of ways to say this is the good news. But this is how Pope Francis says it, and a lot of you know this phrase, so I'm using it here. Uh, Pope Francis says that that first proclamation of the gospel, the way of the gospel, is this. Jesus Christ loves you, he gave his life to save you, and now he is living at your side every day to enlighten, strengthen, and free you. <clears throat> so the first part of readiness then, discerning readiness, is to discern has anyone said that to these children mm -hmm. in a way that they understand? You know, they're not going to understand that sentence. Yeah. So has, has anyone told them about the love of Jesus in their life, the love God has for them, in a way that made them go, oh, you know, like, like it was news. And they, they now want to be part of that. They want to sign mm -hmm. up for that. And, and the same is true with adults or, any, or teens. Anyone that we're discerning readiness for, we have to first say, have they heard the good news? Have, have, have they heard the kerygma? Have they, have they been touched by the movement of the Holy Spirit in their hearts such that now they want to live that way? And the way that they hear the <clears throat> kerygma is by coming to the church and knocking on the door and saying, hey, proclaim the kerygma to me. I think you're being silly now. I am. The, again, <clears throat> the responsibility of proclaiming the good news falls not upon the child or their family or the inquirer. It falls upon us, the baptized faithful. That's our first and only mission, to announce the gospel of Christ by our lives and by our words. And so if we go if we go back to the RCIA, I gotta put on my old old person glasses here and just go to paragraph one, the very beginning of the rite. It tells us uh, these steps. The rite of Christian initiation presented here is designed for adults, so again, meaning a person who has reached the age of reason, who, after hearing the mystery of Christ proclaimed, that's step one, they have heard the mystery of Christ proclaimed, and we are responsible for proclaiming that mystery of Christ. Yep. So... Let's say that we've announced the good news. Mm -hmm. Somehow, by our words and action, we have said to, uh, to these young ones, here's the mystery of Christ. 
you know, Jesus loves you. And they, and they, we sort of sense that they get that. We sort of sense that they are responding to that. What signs are we going to look for to know that that word has penetrated deeply enough in their hearts that they're now ready to celebrate the rite of acceptance? Mm -hmm. And the RCI gives us almost a bullet list of signs that we're going to look for. So if you turn to uh, paragraph 42 in the RCIA, <clears throat> you'll see there, this is, these are some of the bullets. Evidence of the first faith, uh, an initial conversion, an intention to change their lives, uh, an intention to enter into a relationship with God in Christ. Then as a consequence of those uh, signs we're looking for, then there'll be evidence of the first stirrings of repentance, a start of a prayer life, mm -hmm. a sense of the church, and some experience of the company of the, the company and spirit of the Christian community. Okay, so we're going to look for those things. You can go if you if you missed all those, just turn to paragraph forty-two in the RCA. They're all listed there. And when we see those things happening in the children, when we see they've got that first flicker of faith, when they see they've got that initial conversion and intention to change their lives, when they see that we've, they've got the beginning of a prayer life, then we can say, oh, we've, we see signs now that the Holy Spirit has really touched their hearts and they're beginning to take a step on the journey to of respond. faith. To respond. They're beginning to conform their lives to the gospel. Mm -hmm. and, and that <clears throat> dynamic, God's action, their response, is the fundamental dynamic of the right of acceptance. God calls, we respond. And so we want to make sure, we want to see the evidence, the, we want to look for the signs, the visible signs in a person's life, that that, is, that dynamic is actually happening. And then we celebrate that and ritualize it and strengthen that dynamic through the rite of acceptance. The rite of acceptance is merely naming what is already present in the person's life and then uh, bringing God's uh, grace and uh, through the prayer of the church to strengthen that relationship already present. Now here's where we do some adapting for children because some of this language sounds like it was written for adults and intended for adults. So, so let's look at some of these bullet points and talk about how we interpret these for children. So even, even very, very young children, our nephew is five years old, Diana's nephew. Hi, Jake. And, and, uh, and we know that he has already entered into a relationship with God in Christ. His parents are very faithful. They've taken a mass every Sunday. Well, lately it's streaming mass, but you know, he, he knows some of his prayers. He's, he, he knows some scripture. He can sing some songs he says, from church. In the main of the yeah, yeah, he's, in the main he can of, make the the father. of the father. So <laughs> you know, so so even though the sentence is sort of adult sounding, it's it's very simple for especially young children to enter into that beginning relationship with God in Christ. Um, very young children can have a start of a practice of calling God, calling on God in prayer. We all, most of us can. We're too young. We don't remember when we started to pray because our parents started to teach us to pray when we were infants and we just have uh, our earliest memories are about prayer. Now, when the right says they have to have an initial conversion and an intention to change their lives, that might be difficult to understand how we apply that to very young children because, our, again, our nephew is five years old. What's he going to change? He's got, he's got not very much life to change. You know, but do you remember <clears throat> it? Yeah, well, do go you, ahead. Tell are story. you going to tell that no, go story? Ahead. Go ahead. Oh, gosh. Okay, so Jake and his family live in Southern California. And uh, whenever we go visit, we'd hang out with Jake, and there's a little playground near where they live, and so we take him to the playground, and it's a, a sand box with the monkey bars and everything. And one day, Jake wanted to bring all of his toys to the playground, and, and Jake's an only child. So we he filled up his red wagon flyer whatever that is or literally a red wagon filled it all up with his toys and he dr drug it dragged it to the playground so we get there and he's playing he's tossed all of his toys onto the sand and he's playing with them and then these he's, he's playing with like 
a tenth of them. He's got so yes. many toys he can't play with all of them. And at this point, I think he's four. Yeah, he was like a year ago. So, two or three other children, a little about his age, but also a little old, older, started approaching the playground and saw all the toys and. Just like kids are supposed to do, they are enamored of all of these toys and they start playing with Jake's toys. And Jake comes running up to us and says, they're playing with my toys. And he's kind of all sad and crying. And <laughs> so cute. And we say, oh, Jake, that's okay. Can you share? Can you share your toys with them? I don't want to because I they're, they're going to take it with them. And so we, he's getting distraught. And so, so we say, okay, Jake, well, why don't we go back home then? Let's gather up all your toys and, and go back home. But maybe you want to think about next time, you might want to share your toys. You want to say the rest? Yes. And we kind of, we got his dad involved in the conversation. His dad kind of talked to him and really, you know, did a very lovely conversation with him, not scolding at all, but just challenging Jake to think a little bit about what it was like to share and, and how Jake likes it when people share with him. Yeah, and, and, it was all about how did you feel, yeah. which I thought was, Mark, good job. Yeah. <laughs> very good mystagogical question yeah. because feelings are the action of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. How we feel, joy, grief awe, wonder, those are the Holy Spirit saying, pay attention, yeah. what's happening here and how should you respond? Well, so the end of the story is Jake got converted or, or the beginnings of conversion by his father's questioning and his father didn't tell him what to do. He just told him to think about all these things. And uh, then we went back to the playground the next day and it, I, you know, we've been to that playground a lot, and it's always just us and Jake. Miraculously, a different set of children <laughs> showed up, and and before Same thing they happened. before they even got there, Jake is like, you know, wanting to offer them toys to play with. So it's 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 like even a very young child can have that sense of conversion, have that sense of wanting to change their lives, have that uh, the the right says yeah. the first stirrings of repentance. Yeah, and and Jake, so he he actually says to the children here would you like to play with my toys yeah. and then as soon as he does that he comes running back to us and says i introduced myself to them and <laughs> asked them if they wanted to play with my toys and nick asked jake so jake how do you feel i feel good <laughs> oh my god yeah. our hearts just yeah. broke at yeah. that point yeah. but that was conversion happening right before our eyes so again, it's the same, we're looking for the very same steps in adult lives, we're looking for that. Again, it's, it says the first stirrings of repentance. I don't know if Jake was, is gonna share now forever. I'm probably, if he's anything like me, probably not. But you know, but he's got that first stirring of repentance and, and, we're, and adults were looking for the same thing. They don't have to be model Christians to celebrate this right. They just have, a, have to have the right says an intention to change their lives. They don't act, have to actually change. And, and so, and, and all of the criteria that I listed before are, are those very, very simple, low bar kinds of initial beginning steps on the journey of faith. When we see those signs, those are all yeses. They're yeses to the gospel. It's as small and as minimal as they are. They are a yes in response to God's loving mm -hmm. invitation. And so then in the right, when the presider says to them, are you willing to follow the way of the gospel, they can say yes with some level of confidence because we've seen already in their lives uh, some yeses to that to that question, some yeses to that invitation by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this is not to say that infants, children who have not right. yet reached the age of reason, cannot in their own way say yes to the action of the Holy Spirit. It is simply that we cannot visibly see and discern that that is what they're doing because they're children. Well, it's instinctual they're, more they're than, infants. they're yes. not making a conscious decision. Yes. They're, they're responding instinctually to the love of their parents or the love of their families yes. and, you know, and they're responding back, but it's, it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a conscious decision. They don't, and when, they, when they cry or throw something or they're, you a know, willful. bad tempered, they're, 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 you're right, they're not conscious of making a choice to be difficult. It's a it's an instinctual response. As opposed to someone a little older like our nephew, he knows when he's 
not cooperating. You know, he's, he gets in moods once in a while where he's just definitely not going to mm-hmm. not going to do what his parents want him to do because he's he's, you know, like all of us, yeah. he's just a little ticked off that day or a little tired or a little unwilling. That's a choice he's making. Whereas when he was much younger, he he wasn't able to make a choice. And so notice that these prerequisites are not about what a person knows. Right or understands about the faith, but it's about how does a person respond willingly to God's action in their life. We ask the same thing of parents who bring their infant for baptism. So for infants who are baptized, we ask the parents, do you willingly undertake all of the responsibilities? Do you understand what you are saying yes to? And so that dynamic again, is present in both rites. The difference is for the rite of acceptance, it is the actual candidate, the child or the adult who is responding to that question. Now, here's the really cool thing. Once they say, they make those little yeses to the criteria that I listed off. Once they make the little yeses, the little steps, the very beginning flickers of faith that begin to shine, the rite says God will shower grace upon them. It does? Yeah, so in paragraph paragraph 41. That's cool. Yeah, so so God is going to shower grace. So they're going to have like all the love and strength they need to say to say that bigger yes in the right that they're going to follow the way of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that's to me so powerful. And, And it's I say this often. I think it's great for the catechumens. I think it's great that God showers grace on them and gives them the strength and they're conforming their lives and they're going to become disciples and all that's wonderful and that's not why I do this. <laughs> I, I mean, it is sort of, but, but I do this because of what happens to parishioners, what happens to me when we witness these beginners in faith saying that little yes and God showering grace on them, how much more has God showered us with grace? We're like the older son in that prodigal son story. We've gotten so many riches that we just oftentimes take for granted. And when we see these new people stepping out in faith this way, it reminds us of our own faith. It reminds us of our own yes. It reminds us of the times we failed to say yes when we had more strength, more gifts, better information, more practice at saying yes, and we still didn't say yes. And God still showers us with grace, unimaginable grace. And, and we get another chance. We get when we, these, these newcomers in our lives are another chance for us. To, to live out our discipleship, to, to say yes to God in, in the deepest way that we're capable of. And so Jake's little moments of conversion there made both of us think, oh man, we should share more <laughs> our toys. <laughs> we gotta be better at sharing our toys, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so. fine God, thanks. <laughs> Anyways, anything else on that? No, that's kind of the, as I said, the short version is we're going to do discernment the same way we do with adults, but it's, oh, it's yeah. inter- interpreted through the lens of caretakers, parents, catechists, how we, how we communicate with children on their level, these very same, mm-hmm. very big ideas of faith and discipleship. There was one other point you made there that all of this isn't just done with the child. Right. It's who whoever is in the circle of that child's care you know their their family their household whoever is uh, going to accompany them whether they are christian or not um how are they going to support this child and, in and, that? and how are they saying yes to god's loving action yeah. in their lives they they don't necessarily you, they need a the child is going to need a sponsor from the parish and and that person is saying yes to god's love uh, in a Catholic way, but the, the child also has a family or, you know, someone around him and they have to be supportive enough that they're willing to go f- walk on this journey mm-hmm. with him in this conversion process. And so when we do ministry or discernment or any kind of catechesis, whatever, with children, we're really doing it more with, with the their family, family. unit yeah. um, because that's how those they are the first teachers for that child. And yeah. so so it's, think of uh, catechumenate ministry with children more like family ministry. Yes. Right. Okay. 
Alrighty, so we still have a, a busy week. Um, tomorrow is a Team RCIA members only chat. Yes. On the directory for catechesis, the new one that yeah. just came out, 2020. So if you want to be part of that, go to teamrca.com. On the upper right hand of the, of the navigation bar is a thing that says members. Mm -hmm. And click on that. Or in the, uh, there's also a link in the sidebar where you can learn about membership and sign up for that. Yes, but again, it's only for Team RCIA members. Yep. Yes, all right. All right, everyone. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you very much for um, all of the uh, wonderful blessings that you continue to do, even in this, what, 21st year of 2020? Yeah, um, it's the longest decade year ever. I know, I know. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Uh, and um, we continue to pray for you, so we hope you continue to pray for us. We'll be posting, we post all of these Facebook Live videos on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Team RCIA. Yeah. And so there's a ton of yep. videos there. And you so. can go back and replay this one as long, as often yes. as you want, or for any team members who no. missed it. And do you like Nick's Yes, it's my pandemic my hair. pandemic hair. <laughs> I, well, when the pandemic started, I needed a haircut before the pandemic started, and then I waited too long, and they wouldn't let me go, and so now I've, I, I still can't go. So anyway, I Diana like likes it. it long. I think it's shaggy. But Jake's hair is really long, yeah. it, so you're getting. I'm to getting the to Jake Diana's length. length. So anyway, all right, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Take care. God bless. <laughs>